So, how to mount your skis yourself. Step one, find a spot where you really should not mount your skis, like this great wooden plate, perfectly to get some scratches in. So, I think that will be a perfect spot. Step two, find something to put on. Yoga mat. Step three, music on. Step four, put yourself a copy down. On the next step, you actually need skis. Find out which one is the left one, which one is the right one, is the left one, is it the right one. Next step, you actually need bindings. So for the purpose of this video, um, since I'm a line athlete, we get to use marker bindings and therefore I've been using them for a couple of years and I only know how to drill those because that manual will basically translate to any bindings but you need a specific jig for these bindings and I only have the marker ones. So, I've got the front plates divided in two pieces, the first two screws and the other two screws that go in back there. System how it works with the marker bindings is you draw this one down, slide it in and then you can fix the rest of the front plate. And quick tech check, if anybody knows what that is, I do know that. Let me know in the comments for what its purpose is. It's actually one of the most important things, especially for your knees. That's hint enough. These are the back plates. The cool thing about Mark is you don't even have to hustle how to mount these. Just mount this super mellow back plate and slide it on top and you're good to go. I love the system, it's so convenient and chill. We got the bindings and the skis, now we need the jig. So this is the jig I'm using for it. The jigs are actually the most important part beside the drill bit and this is the reason why retailers actually charge you so much for drilling skis because you have to get one of these, they're around 100 bucks. But if you're a passionate skier that uses a lot of pairs during the season or even over the years and you're gonna end up sticking to the same brand of bindings, you might as well get yourself these because you then never have to pay anymore for drilling. And with that drill, you can see it's color-coded. It tells you for what bindings it's good. For me, it's the Jester, but it also goes for Griffin, Squire 310, and race models with the marker bindings. And it's literally impossible to fail drilling. Like you see those holes, you just point the drill, screw down, and you're good. And this is what costs you around 40 to 50 bucks per drilled pair in a ski trip. That's a freaking scam in my opinion. But I guess they have to make money. Another thing what you need, a good old drill. I'm using the classic, I'll need this later. I got a Makita one, non sponsor. Got this for Christmas, pretty great. Take this one, it's basically battery driven, got all kinds of modes. Let's check if we have enough battery, yeah we do. And also the second one, oh, this might be a close call but it should suffice. And this is the holy grail of mounting skis. Every binding requires a different one because of different sizes but the Mark 1 uses this one, it's a 3.6 times 9.5 in di diameter. And you see how this drill bit is actually built? like how it's thicker here and smaller there this part prevents you from actually drilling for your skis and this piece costs around 9 euros and with that a little child can just drill your ski you can point it down it drills and it just stops at this point which is then the perfect deepness of the hole for your screws so let's get the drilling starting first we prep the drill bit Put it in. Okay, it's locked and loaded. Now we need something to elevate it. Super professional. I'm using radio boxes to elevate my ski. Now we need a pen. I use the pens because I just want to highlight it a bit more so it's easier to align. Thankfully, line is giving us true center markings so you can have it dead center mounted. Throw my ski book. And now you put it in there, check if it fits. Now I open this buckle so I can actually shift the sizes of the jig. Completely aligned, you see this little straight line down there, small. Make sure it's straight so your boot is aligned. Close this one down, remove it, open up the jig, align it with your center mount. Now I'm looking down carefully that I'm aligned in the center. 
Next step, since everything is light, you take it, go into your holes. Right, that's it, that's the drilling. I release the jig, get rid of a bit of the wood. Seems about right. We finished drilling, see the holes all nice, everything lines up perfectly. Switched my drill to the screwdriver bit now, and now the easy part basically you follow. You need glue that is water resistant for wood, and a screwdriver just in case for manual driving because you're not going to fully use the automatic one you put in the glue nice done did it now you take this part put it in by wiggling a little bit you can feel the screws aligning I'm taking this one always look to manually align them first So they grip a little. Get this in ni nicely, now it barely moves. And now you basically set the resistance like, I usually go like for like 17, and then I'll start mounting. Yep, and always diagonally. Apply firm pressure. Okay, now all are kind of in. And now, since I've got experience, I'll just feel my way in. How? What the maximum is of the grip? The most important part is that I want to finish off by hand because then you can really feel when the maximum grip is about to happen with the screws because you don't want to over screw your screws otherwise they just completely go through and you mess up the wood inside and you basically ruin your binding and the ski that feels solid the extras yep see the glue coming through all grippy double check there is no gap in there and next step you just now continue with the front pieces you always start on the mark adjuster ones with the very first one. So, same thing, glues. Yep, yep. Align it on top, manual connection, and now the same thing. That screws in by hand. Seems about right. Now you take this piece and you shove it into the piece you just connected. So, perfectly in, you can see the holes in there, put the screws in, alright, classic manual corrections, really feel for the maximum resistance so you don't overspin it and ensure that the screws are gripping, they grip nicely, Let's see we got no gaps in between the ski and the binding feels good to me and now you finish off with the heel piece that's the very casual part so you basically I'm gonna switch this one push down the binding slide it from the inside in now you're on the rails basically I move up the back buckle so you got more space to reach this screw mash it in you hear a click when it connects with this sliding plate and then as I push towards the right to the outside I'm gonna use the screw and move it outside great put it down the ski is mounted only the fitting remains rinse and repeat for the other ski and voila you got your skis mounted by yourself. So once you finished mounting up your skis, you quickly grab your boot, put it in, check if the back pressure is all right. You basically turn this one in. On the, until this back screw is dead even, but you have to adjust the front plate with this test 
The idea of it is you put it between the boot and the sliding plate. If the boot is in and you can move only the bottom part without the upper part, the pressure on the front plate is all right. And you do this for the both bindings. And remember, whenever you slide the forward plate, you always have to end up adjusting the back plate. So yeah, that's how you mount your skis. That's why you get actually scammed so much money in the retail shop. If you have this tool by yourself, you can do it by yourself pretty much dummy secure and if you got any questions about marker bindings and the mounting of them let me know and i catch you guys in the next video see ya